friends out there, this is Mario Rondon again. I'm going to give you a little, uh, I always say a little, but it contains a lot of material. I wrote this down today from my heart after seeing that 115 of you wrote comments and loved my video, my last video. I, uh, I've been aspiring for this to happen, to have you folks out there say, hey, I love your video. I'm learning a lot from your video. And this Saturday I have another video with the same way that I had this first one with music and astonishing acts. That's what I call it. Well, today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about average. You can't be average and succeed. Why do I say this? See, in your job you get hired and you work eight hours and then you have a lunch hour or half an hour, then you go home. And you watch TV and you watch the ball game when you have a beer and you have a cigarette. That's average. That's what average people do. That's why the average person never succeeds. What do I mean by that? Never reaches a point in their lives that they have enough income for their kids' college education, enough income so if something happens, their wife is taken care of, enough income to help their family entirely. The average person doesn't have this. They work and live from paycheck to paycheck. Okay, and, and the first thing I want to start with also is never say I can't do something. Always say I can do it. I will continue to strive to do it. In your new job or in your job, a regular job, they're going to ask you to do certain things. The boss is going to come up to you and say, I want this project done by this time. And if you say, well, I can't have it done by that time, what's going to happen is, you're going to inevitably get fired. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. When I first started with American Airlines cleaning bathrooms, then I went to aircraft maintenance, like I said. There was no such thing as computers, internet, nothing like that. Today, there's all of that. In those days that we had what was called a microfish, and it was a square tape, and you put it on the machine, and then you, shh, you go to where you want to go to. When I first got hired, I had to take an exam after six months at every airplane American Airlines had in their fleet and explain how to do jobs at every airplane. So what I started doing was coming in from the Bronx, leaving my house at six o'clock in the afternoon. By the time I got to Kennedy Airport, it was eight o'clock. And I would study from eight, nine, 10, 11. When I started work, I would study those three hours and I would do the same thing in the morning. I would be very, very, very tired. There were times that I fell asleep on the train and opened up my eyes in Pelham Bay Parkway, which was the last exit, and I would have to take the train all the way back to where I lived. But I thought this was a sacrifice that I had to endure. Mostly everybody else, all my friends had cars. I had, I had no car. I didn't have a father to buy me a car. My mother couldn't afford to buy me a car, so I had to take the train and the bus. Like I said, this allowed me to learn about the different jobs in the 747, 707, 727, and we didn't have 767 in those days, but we had seven DC-10-30, and we also have freighter airplanes that carry only freight. So I had to learn about all those different airplanes in order to make it through what was called exhausting times. I fell, like I said, on the way home, and like I said, I, I would wake up an hour later. What's holding you back? You tell me. What's holding you back? Is it fear? Are you fearful? You know, we grow up only knowing certain fears. Fear of the dark and, and fear to be by ourselves. We, we learn the fear of dying. We learn the fear of not succeeding by the people we surround ourselves with. Are you surrounding yourself? with successful people that really care for you? Is your mate helping you? Are your parents that are still alive helping you? Is your brother helping you? Are the friends that you're hanging around with helping you? Or are they being toxic in your life? Toxicity comes from hanging around people that all they want to do is drink beer, smoke marijuana, take drugs, chase women, behind their wife's back, or if they're single, just chase women all the time and pay them and have sex with them. And I find that this is inevitably poor. 
those years, like I said, were exhausting, but I loved my job. It was a dream I had for many years. What's your dream? What's holding you back? Race, ethnicity, racism all exist and will continue to exist till we die, till, till the world changes, till, I believe, till Jesus takes over. There are not many Puerto Ricans aspiring to be, to achieve what I want to achieve, which is to become a motivational speaker renowned around the world. That's my dream, to touch millions of lives. Not necessarily to make millions of dollars, no, but if that happens, thank God, I'll give 20 or 30% to St. Jude's Hospital. I'll help out my kids even more. Two of my kids are having to struggle. My first one, he's very successful, he doesn't need my help. Him and his wife are extremely successful, have a beautiful house, and I send them kudos, and I tell them, I love you, Andy, wherever you are, I respect you, and I'm proud of you. Abraham Lincoln was one person that inevitably had lots of failures in his life. What I failed to tell you before this is that you will fail your way to success. You will be, there will be doors closed in your face, telephones thrown in your, thrown in your ear, just a word, just an expression, I'm using thrown in your ear, but they'll hang up on you. People don't want to hear from nobody that wants to succeed in life because it's so hard. It, it takes away from watching TV, watching ball games, drinking beer, smoking cigarettes, just doing a lot of things. Invariably, like I said, you will fail your way to success. Walt Disney had two nervous breakdowns. I myself had one when my mother got killed and put myself in the hospital. Uh, he had two and he claimed bankruptcy seven times. Abraham Lincoln failed his way to success. He became president of the United States after enduring his daughter's death and his wife's death. And then he was murdered. So you think about, wow, these people went through all of this for me. They were trying to make a better world for me. They didn't know I was coming, but invariably you were coming. God knew already when you were in your mother's stomach that you were going to come out of this century. And that you were going to be part of the people surrounding you in this century. And who you're around and what you say and what you do influences other people. You see, that's why I have to live a crispy, clean life. A life with integrity. When no one's looking, I'm going to do the right thing. Our dreams, like I said, and aspirations, careers, and everything we desire that is worthwhile and worth with, with integrity will take years to accomplish. But I'm a firm believer that God in His fearsome but for, is for us and so is Jesus. I wanted to tell you that, again, there's going to be a lot of entropy in your life. I always talk about entropy. I found that so, so interesting from Diego Dreyfus when he said la entropía in Spanish. Y el caos, the chaos. And for those of you that understand English and Spanish, which I think is fantastic, he said that through your life, you're going to have entropy, you're going to have challenges, you're going to have pain, you're going to have sorrow, you're going to have blood, sweat, and tears, literally. I spoke, like I said, we became acquainted a year later after I was cleaning professional, after I was cleaning it, the aircraft professionally, but before that I met Mary Travis, and Mary Travis opened the door for me. She paved the way for me to work at American Airlines. It took a whole year, but I met her super, her son-in-law, which I consider him to be super. He took me to see airplanes. He took me when they were driving airplanes, and I was only 18 years old, so you can imagine an 18-year-old kid from the South Bronx, from the ghetto, sitting in an aircraft in the cockpit while they were taxiing me into the hangar. I, I, for me, it was an experience that I will never, ever, ever forget. I had attained my, like I said, my dream, but something was missing. I still wanted more for my life, but nothing came because I did nothing. Just work and came home and went to sleep. Invariably, you will fail your way to success, like I said. Our dreams and aspirations and careers and everything we desire that is worth something 
is marked with integrity, like I said, will take years to accomplish. But I'm a firm believer that God, in His fearsome love for us, and Jesus will place beyond will place people in our lives that will help us. He placed that young man in my life. He put him there. He put Doña Madeline in my life. He put her in my life. Why? I don't know. Why did I move here in Spanish? Por qué me mudé aquí cuando me pude mudar en todos los sitios en Miami? Why did I end up here? Because God wanted me here. Because he knew that these people were Christian people and were going to help me pave the way to my future. Not that they were going to do it for me. I don't expect anyone to do anything for me. This took me hours to put together this morning. I got up and I said, early in the morning, 5 o'clock, what do I do? And I said, you know, I'm really not totally prepared to do the speech. I like to, I like to speak without having to look at the paper. And I can't do it, but it won't be as good. So that's why I'm sharing this the way I'm sharing it. After a while, I still felt, like I said, when my, my, my mother got killed, I still felt suffering from OCD. And like I said, I ended up in the hospital. It was two weeks in the hospital. And I'm still suffering. I retired early from American Airlines. Retired early because I had enough money. So I retired early, but I couldn't get my pension to you two years later because I was only 53 when I retired. I, was, I had 28 years with American Airlines as a technician, but I retired and I started receiving a uh, social security disability, which was quite large, and this afforded me to live real low compared to the way I lived before, but now I get them both, and I'm grateful for them, but I want more. I just don't want to receive a check and sit at home watching TV. I don't want to sit having beer or drinking or smoking cigarettes, I don't want it, or chasing women. I don't want any part of that. That's not what I want out of life. I want more out of life. I want, when I die, I want people to say, here lies a man that helped others and loved his family and never gave up. As you see, I too have entropy in my life. And I will never live, I will never live on earth without some kind of chaos and entropy. Why? Because we do not live in a utopic society. A lot of people think they live in a utopic world. We think that life is perfect. In Spanish, is, la vida no es perfecta. Van a venir muchos dolores, pero los evita por las rodillas. Como? Rezando. In life, you will succeed if you get on your knees and you pray to the Lord. And you ask God to help you, to help you work hard, even though there's people against you, to help you work hard and never, ever, ever give up. Different jobs that I needed to, like I said, to perform in the aircraft. But I want to tell you a little something. I'm married. I'm still married today. But there's a lot of entropy and a lot of chaos in this marriage. She sees one way, I see the other way. It's not about me being with any woman or anything of that nature. It's just that she doesn't understand my dream. She doesn't understand what I want to do in my life. I want to speak in front of thousands of people. I want to influence and touch lives, perhaps millions of people, and travel the world. I'm waiting to hear from Doña Madeline's nephew. I'm waiting to hear from him so that he could talk to me and I could talk to him and let him know that I, hey, I got a new tape out. I'm going to have the, this, this video will come out on Saturday afternoon. It will come out with music and everything. And you folks out there that put suggestions, and you put comments, comments by the way, was what you said. I'm going to answer you all back because I love you. Thank you for saying that I'm a professional. Thank you for saying that I did a great job. Thank you for taking the time from your day to write to Mario. For saying, oh, hello Mario, hola Mario, gracias por lo que hiciste. Bello, bella. Tu vas a ser un profesional. Tu eres un artista ya. Those things were said to me in English. You're an actor. You're a professional. We love you. I love your tape. You really know what you're doing. I just want you to know out there, you people that haven't subscribed, they subscribe. Especially you people that com that put comments, subscribe. That way the videos go directly to you before they're even done. So with that, I'm going to leave you. 
And I want you to know that I'm having difficult times in my life. It's not easy when one person in the marriage doesn't care about the other person in the marriage and what they're doing. But I'm not taking any steps in any direction. I'm going to let God guide me. And whatever happens, happens. I lost my first marriage, but I was able to put three kids through a better life than I received in the Bronx. And I don't have any children this time, and that's for the best. But I ask you to please comment on my video. Please take the time to look and see that I really care about you, that I really love you. I don't want to repeat myself and become redundant, but like I've always told you, if you want to succeed in life, you have to hang around with eagles. The eagles fly way above and look down and they can see for miles a mouse. Everyone else is at the bottom. There's an argument always at the bottom of the tree. But when you reach the top, there's plenty of room at the top. So please, I beg of you, don't give up on your dream. And I'll, I will do another video on Sunday, and it will come out during the week. So I'm going to try to put out two to three videos a week. That way you can see me, you can inspire to be like me, you can send me good comments that keep me going and give me strength. I love you, God bless you, good night.